In a previous video, I showed how I installed and managed Ruby on my own development machine. In the interim, I've actually installed OpenBSD onto my personal machine, and I've been enjoying it so far. But the scripts I use to install Ruby, i.e. Ruby install, aren't compatible with OpenBSD. And because I still want to be able to develop in Ruby on this machine, and because I don't want to beat my head against the wall forcing these scripts to work, I decided it was much simpler to manually compile Ruby from source. I mean, in essence, Ruby install does the exact same thing, but it has to take into account a lot more platforms and use cases than I really need. And compiling from the source code is actually pretty straightforward. Now, while the operating system I'm using is OpenBSD, these instructions should be able to be translated across different operating systems, even if the commands aren't exactly the same. Anywho, here's how I do it. As I mentioned before, I use chruby to manage different versions of Ruby. You don't see anything here because I don't have Ruby installed. Now, it's an incredibly useful tool, and it's very minimalist as well. Only about 100 lines of code, which makes it easy to understand. Now, it does require bash or zsh, and OpenBSD doesn't come with either of those, so you'll have to add those packages yourself. Let's just make sure I have chruby loaded in my shell. Yep, there it is. Just a few shell scripts loaded in my bashrc file. On with the installation. First, we need to make sure we have the correct dependencies installed. This is a pretty new installation of OpenBSD with only a few packages installed, namely Vim and some firmware. Uh, one of the dependencies we need is already on OpenBSD by default, which is OpenSSL, or rather OpenBSD's version called LibreSSL. However, we're going to need some other dependencies as well. After those are installed, let's go ahead and check that the dependencies are where we expect them. This is where you can find OpenSSL, and this is where you can find the other dependencies. OK, now we can download the Ruby source code. You can do this a number of ways, but I'm going to open up a browser to the Ruby homepage and download it from there. Let's go to the download page and then get the stable release and download Ruby 3.0.2. Let's clear my screen. So I've got the tarball, now I just need to extract it. Next, we need to configure Ruby with a few options. First, we want to configure where we're going to install Ruby. I usually keep my Ruby installations in my home directory. This is great for development, keep everything nice and separated. If I needed to deploy to a production machine, I'd probably install it elsewhere which I might explore as a future topic, a production Ruby environment on OpenBSD. Next, we need to configure where to find our dependencies, both OpenSSL and the others. And then we just hit Enter. All right, that took about 30, 40 seconds. Now that that's configured, we can compile Ruby and install. This will take a couple of minutes, so be prepared to wait. And with that, we have Ruby installed on this machine. Let's check it out. First, we need to use chruby to set our Ruby version, but I think if we use chruby right now, it won't be able to detect the new Ruby installed quite yet. 
Uh, so let's load the bash RC file. And then let's check chruby. Yes, we now see the new Ruby version, and now we can set the Ruby version with the chruby. And now we have Ruby. Let's run a few scripts. Now we can run that. As you can see, we've now compiled Ruby from the source code, installed it onto our machine, and run it. Folks, that's all I have for today. If you have questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com. I'm also on Twitter, GitHub, and other social networks if you'd like to find them. Until next time.